Item one, talking Aztec basketball. Okay, here we go. Why don't you respect us? Mm. That's what Aztec fans are telling me. That's what they're telling the nation. Why don't you respect us? Well, I tried to figure out why San Diego State has had all the success from Steve Fisher through Brian Dutcher and guts no respect at all. On any of the national TV shows, and they're talking about college basketball, West Coast, well, UCLA is doing well under Mick Cronin, and Gonzaga is Gonzaga. Nobody ever mentioned San Diego State. Now, one sentence about the Aztecs and Brian Dutcher. I went back and did a little bit of research here. Let me throw you some numbers just about the situation. Brian Dutcher's record at San Diego State has been pretty doggone impressive. 144 and 46. Mm. That followed the legendary, should be in the Hall of Fame coach, Steve Fisher. Mark Few at Gonzaga, in the same window as Brian Dutcher, his record is 218 and 23. Mm. Really impressive. Yes. The difference why San Diego State gets no respect Mark Fuse won 38 games in the NCAA tournament at Gonzaga. 38. Mm -hmm. Brian Dutcher, none. Mm. 0 for 3. And I, I think that's that's the reason. Unless there are victories and upset victories coming from San Diego State, there'll always be an afterthought as it relates to college basketball. The Zags got to the Final Four. The Zags have been in the Elite Eight. Aztecs went to the Sweet 16 once and out. That's why nobody respects San Diego State. That's the answer to the question for everybody's beefing and barking and bitching <laughs> about that. Aztecs, Colorado State, they live in unborrowed time. We have talked about how erratic the Aztec basketball team is, and they staggered and they struggled. And I think they got out schemed and out coached by Nico Medved, but they finally won because of their depth. Their guards bailed them out in the Thursday first round game in the Mountain West Conference tourney. Bigs didn't play well at all. Colorado State has about five and a half players and Nico Medved got his kids just to man up and play rugged defense and find enough baskets late to climb back in the thing multiple times. So the Aztecs will march on. The Aztecs are going to the tournament. But as I've said, probably over the last four weeks on our podcast, John, who is this basketball team who do you trust? Do you think they're living on borrowed time? Yeah, I sometimes I wonder, but you know, every game it's someone different, right? And that's what happened again today. You know, I remember one of the YouTube commenters that we were talking about in our last episode was always so frustrated with all the missed chippies like in the paint. And we saw a lot of that today. But the Aztec defense was stout at the end. Um, you know, Ladie actually had a pretty good game, you know, for a guy that was off the bench. Um, Bradley kind of sneaky, quiet was, was effective. Um, so survive and advance. And so now what is the 17 straight years? They won in the quarterfinals in the mountain West conference. All I know is that Aztec nation, they're all at the bar right now in one of the casinos with this big sigh of relief. And they're going to get ready for tomorrow. I'm going to stop at CVS on the way home and see if they have a deal on pacemaker machines because <laughs> man, this has been a struggle. Let's go on to the uh, UCLA Bruins. Mick Cronin's got a team that's really playing well. They really play tough defense. They're living off the play of just a couple of their uh, guards. Tiger Campbell, Jaime Jaquez have had really good seasons, but now a huge blow. They lose one of their starting guards, the defensive player of the year in the Pac-12 conference. Jalen Clark, ruptured Achilles tendon in the final game of the season, gone for the rest of the year. Now they've got David Singleton, who's got a lot of experience, has stepped into the line to replace him. They've got a young kid in Amari Bailey. I just don't know if the Aztecs have enough firepower now that they've lost Jalen Clark, but they're sitting there with 28 wins because they did struggle. They beat Colorado, but it's going to get tougher and tougher as we actually move into March Madness. Yeah, well, it's, it's you know, UCLA, obviously a storied program, but it's nice to see them back at the forefront of not just the Pac-12, but of college basketball overall. They got a lot of great players there. Um, they should win this unless Arizona knocks them off somewhere down um, down the line here in this in these brackets. But uh, yeah, you know, it's interesting how these teams, you know, number one seeds, they get in there against an eight seed and things get a little squirrely in, in some of these tournaments. And, you know, in a situation nobody ever talks about playing three games in three days or three games in 44 hours, the way the schedule breaks down. 
that's pretty tough on these kids. So UCLA is now 28-4. and four. They march on into the Pac-12 tournament. 